Hi, I'm Diane Dayton with Cool Jazz Cafe. We're at the 27th annual Boscovsburg's Jazz Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania at the beautiful Double Tree by Hilton in downtown Reading. Catching up right now with fabulous smooth jazz pianist. You're also a ranger, producer, radio host, and I know a host of other things, including author. Thanks for taking time. Thank you. So nice to be here. It's so good to see you and so good to catch up with you. Got to hear your show last oh. night. New Urban Jazz Party, and it truly was, was it a party. party. Oh, yeah. I did, had a did great it finish time. Right? Yeah, it was great. It was really, really good. Now, you live in Atlanta, but you're originally from New York. Mm -hmm. And music was introduced to you through your father. Is that right? Yes, I was. Uh... Well, I grew up listening to music ever since I could remember. He he was a he was a jazz pianist. Never never really got on the national scene, but um, he did play bass with uh, he, he played uh, music with bassist uh, Keeter Betts, who was uh, married to Ella Fitzgerald at the time, mm, okay. and Art Davis, who was the last bassist for John Coltrane. So mm. he was deeply connected, and he was also friends with Max Roach, the great drummer. So I grew up with in a straight ahead household. And so one day, I guess he heard me singing some bebop tune at age, you know, four or five years old. He's like, mm -hmm. what's going on with this kid? I was in the back one day and he decided he was going to play a note on the piano and ask me what the note was. And I, and I, and I told him what the note was, like 50 feet away. He's like, I said, hey. Then he started playing chords. A hey, minor. I, you know, I had it all. I had it all down. Wow. So then I began. I became his little little toy. Um, he would invite his friends over and said, yeah, "Check this out. My son is going to tell you what note this is." And <laughs> hey, in fact, you play. You play the notes, so we know it's not a setup. So that's how. It, that's how I got started. And I, so I grew up listening to Oscar Peterson and some mm. old Quincy Jones band music, and so you know everything morphed. Yeah, from there. one thing goes into the next. You have this wonderful Brazilian American soundtrack that's out and it's like 20 some cuts yes 26 cuts I, I just couldn't stop I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> uh, two hours of music I wanted to try to you know it's my first double CD disc and it seems like no one's doing them anymore mm -hmm. and everybody's so worried about you know, putting eight songs on a record in yeah. 38 minutes I'm like Let me, there's, there's no rules anymore no, you know, there really isn't. People stealing music off the internet, streaming, and you know, Napster just took everybody down anyway. So let's let's just put the music out there, and let the people decide how they're going to, you know, take yeah. it in. What was it about the Brazilian connection for you? Just the sound for me, the sound of the percussion. It was different because I grew up I grew up in New York, um, Mount Vernon, Yonkers, New Rochelle. I used to go down to the city a lot, going down go, go down to the Bronx. I used to see Dave, Dave Valentine. My, my mm -hmm. friend who just passed away, yeah. um, play flute at these small little clubs, and these guys would just be just killing the, the Latin jazz. But the Brazilian jazz had a little softer kind of edge and a little bit more melodic for, for what I did. I, I grew up listening to, you know, Antonio Carlos Jobim, mm -hmm. you know, um, this, that soft samba, bossa nova kind of vibe. And, um, and I had a friend, I met a friend, I met a gentleman who became my friend in the year 2000 by the name of Cafe da Silva. Cafe was percussionist played with oh, Joe Beam as well as uh, Eva Lins and Dejavan and a lot of the great Brazilian yeah. artists, Eliana Elias, in fact. And uh, so, long story short, um, we met and uh, he started telling me about Brazil and some of the people that he knew down there. So, I went on an exploratory trip down there. Mm. I knew, I don't, I don't speak Portuguese, but I, he introduced me to a friend who, who had a studio in, in, in uh, Rio de Janeiro. And um, so this guy spoke Portuguese and English. And he said, well, who do you want to work with? Because I had a budget. I was like, oh, it's like that? <laughs> so, okay, so I, I, top of my list was a group called Azimuth. Mm -hmm. They have about 30 records out. And they're, they're like kind of a loungy, Brazilian, jazzy kind of thing. So I hooked up with the bass player and the drummer from, from that group. And we did two cuts there. Um, and so it just kind of spun from there. So this this engineer who spoke both languages was able to really connect me with some folks. So, and and that experience just confirmed the fact that music is a universal language because none of us spoke each other's language, but yeah. we put the music in front of everybody. Just everybody's got on the same page, man. It was it was yeah. amazing. Yeah, and you've played all over the world, and you see how music really does connect us. Absolutely. Can you think of another place that you were at that it kind of surprised you with the connection? South Africa. Where in South Africa? Uh, uh, Johannesburg. Okay. Yeah, I've been there twice in, in 09 and uh, in 2000. That was really an amazing experience.
experience as well. Um, their percussion sounds are, are, are different, a little more earthy, mm -hmm. um, uh, different kind of rhythm. But you know, a lot of a lot of Africans settled in in Brazil. So the largest inhabitants of Africa actually are in Brazil in Bahia, which I didn't get a chance to go to. But uh, so there's a connection between Africa and Brazil, and but yeah, percussion wise, and just the way people hear music down there, and they love American music. Mm. And of course, you know, Jonathan Butler's a god oh, down there. Yes. But yes. every guitar player down there sounds like him. So this, I go. I could go down any street and find a guy that sounds like Jonathan <laughs> Butler because they all sound like him. And there's a couple guys down there that are amazing. This is a guy named Jimmy Dludlu, D-L-U-D-L-U. Mm. Sounds just like Jonathan, and he's, he's, I think he's from Mozambique. So it's uh, South Africa is definitely uh, the top of my list yeah. as well. New Urban Jazz. You are doing a radio show. You also do live events with that. How long have you been doing this? Well, I started radio in 08. I, I interned at w, uh, WBLS in New York under Frankie Crocker and some of the heavyweights down there. At that time, they were number one in the country. And then I went from there, and that's how I met a, um, um, a personality by the name of Pat Prescott, who now lives in California now. But mm -hmm. she was she was working at BLS, and then she got a job at CD 101.9. Okay. And that's how I kind of broke into the business in 88 with my first record. But um, so I, radio has always been in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I helped launch a smooth jazz station in Bermuda uh, in, in 2005. So they had smooth jazz there. I was able to program that. Yeah. I went over there quite a, quite a few times and uh, programmed in, in Atlanta at WCOK and another station in Jacksonville. So I've been kind of like dabbling with it. Mm -hmm. But when CD 101 went off the air in 2008, I was like, I, like I told you the other yes. night, I was driving up the highway. But yes. Someone sent me a text and said, uh, they're flipping the rock and roll at 4 o'clock today. Wow. I had gotten that text like earlier in the day. I was like, this is some really bad joke. Right. And sure enough, at 4 o'clock, here, here come the rock and roll. Mm -hmm. I got nothing against rock and roll, but man, they just took the jazz off the air like, mm -hmm. like it never happened. Unannounced. Right. They didn't give anybody any warning. So later that year... After finding out there was no smooth jazz between, um, in fact, the station in Philadelphia had gone right. away at that point. Yeah. No smooth jazz between Boston and Orlando. Nothing. Just, right, just because we lost Baltimore and Washington, too. Exactly. And then there was one in Charlotte, and that was gone. And then mm -hmm. Atlanta went away. So I, um, I started newer, you know, the New Urban Jazz Lounge, which kind of kind of filled that void. And then we started connecting with stations that wanted to uh, play a two-hour show. Yeah. So now we're thankfully we're up to 40 stations now. That's great. So, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I'm so glad that you're doing that and you're keeping it out there for us to connect. Have to, yes. Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah. I mean, look at the people that attend this festival, too. Right, right. This is one of the biggest in the country. It is. If not in the world. It's true. And it is. And people want this music and they want to hear it. How would we really describe this music? Because somebody who may just think it, it, it's one thing, it's, it's a lot more than yes. that. Well, at the core is jazz when you think about the harmonies and the melodies, but then it's um, it's R and B. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. light R and B groove, um, and then you have uh, there is some some Brazilian mixed in. There's some traces of, of, of straight ahead, but yeah, it's 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 definitely jazz at the root. Mm -hmm. Jazz is kind of like the the core of uh, you know what this music is. And then you have all these <clears throat> fusion elements that come in. As Absolutely, well too. there is there is some rock elements yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, when you think of, you know, Chick Corea and, and mm -hmm. Return to Forever and the, the Mob Vision, the orchestra, um, you know, but that, you know, in the 70s is when, you know, Grover came and oh, came into play. Yes. When they, it, the the R&B thing kicked in when they started miking the kick drum. Hmm. And they put the, they put the mic in the kick drum and it had a little bit of thump to it. Yeah. And the electric bass. Yeah. And then you had the World Stern and the Fender Row. So that was the beginning of contemporary jazz, which eventually morphed into right. smooth. When you're not playing, performing, traveling, I know you're probably doing that the bulk of the waking hours. I'm not, believe it or not. Oh, well, then what are you doing? M recording. Well, I, well, it's still in the same <laughs> yes. industry. Uh, but I like you, photography. Do you? Okay. I do. I do. I like okay. photography. Um, I love, you know, I love to read. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm into my health and wellness. I just try to, you know, I, I do a lot of reading about, you know, what's good to eat and what's not good to eat so that yes. I can have, you know, extended life, mm -hmm. you know, so I think that's And important. quality of life. Absolutely, because I see so many, so many of my, my friends just, you know, passing away from, yeah. you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, mm -hmm. cancer, you know, it's, it's, yeah. 
I was like, well, how can I avoid you know right. that as much as possible? Yeah. You know, so that's that's a big thing for Take me as well. Yourself. I got to. Yeah. What's really important to you? If I were to just throw that out there in whatever way you want to take that, what do you well, want us to know? Um, I, I think, you know, quality of life is, is an important thing for me. Mm -hmm. Being healthy, um, being healthy, you know, mentally and spiritually. And I try to try to transmit all that energy into my music and spread the love that way. Yeah, well, you do it so well. Oh, well, that's good. Thank you for <laughs> spreading the love. And thank you so much for taking thank this you. time and telling us and more pleasure. about you. Uh, yeah, and telling us more about oh, you absolutely. and where we can find you. Uh, BobBaldwin.com. Okay. That's the artist site. And then you have uh, NewUrbanJazz.com, which is the radio site. And I have a third site, which is CitySketches.com, which we do all our events. That's, that's kind of where we... Uh, post all the events that we do. Excellent. Hopefully there'll be another new urban jazz party coming up sometime. About eight years ago at Rehobo Beach we did Rick Braun, Eric Darius, Ooh, nice. and um, and uh, there was a third artist in there, I forget. And I've done Chuck Loeb, I've mm -hmm. done um, done Will Downing, um, we've got Harry Hugh coming up mm. you know, in, in a few months, but uh, this is a fun one with, with Mary Meadows, um, Walter Beasley and uh, and Tom Brown. I've known mm -hmm. all those guys at least thirty years. That's great. I've known them all. It's family. It is family. I knew I knew Marion and Walter before they started recording. Wow. And so we we go back a few years. I can't tell people I'm forty two anymore. No, you can't. But you know, that will, <laughs> it's close. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. close. Thank you once again. Well, appreciate it. Thank you. We're at the Burks Jazz Fest, and you're going to check out part of the show that happened here.